thanks for joining Hunting with a Passion's bow hunting series, episode number two. Uh, I'm super pumped about this one because, as you saw in the title, Amy got her first deer. So that was super awesome. 30 yard shot. Um, I was still shaking. It wasn't a big deer, but I was just super happy that she got her first deer and with a bow. Um, that's better than what I did because my first deer was a button buck just like that one, but my own was with a gun. So uh, I'm super happy that ha that was that was the way it worked out for her. Um, I'll let her tell that story. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to bring Amy. So like I promised you, I brought the Mighty Hunter uh, to tell her story about her first deer she ever took and took with a bow for her first time too so honey tell us about your amazing experience oh well we went out in the afternoon um saturday afternoon and um little was actually pretty nice out um so i was enjoying that because it had windy. been a little windy though it, it had been, been pretty windy. cold though for um the last couple times so we in the afternoon I think it was the first time i went in the evening first or second time um, but so we were going to go to the airport stand, like a, um, big, oh, what do you call them? Big food plant like a, a hunting tower. shack. It was a shooting tower. Um, tower thing. And we got there and, um, couldn't get in the key didn't, um, work. So then we decided to go back to, um, our regular stand. Um, so we were, you know, a couple minutes like getting in, um, but we sat there and didn't see anything the whole time. Um, heard some stuff. It was really windy. Um, and Very then, windy. The tree was shaking. Remember that? It was, it was really shaky. It was more shaky in my stand because I had to hang on and I was higher up than her. So he was scared. I was not scared. He was scared. Plus, we forgot our uh, harnesses mm -hmm. too, so I was a little worried about that. But anyway, continue. so we got um, it was close to like we didn't have too much more of light left. Um, I would say 30, 40 minutes, and so my mind, I was like, "Hey, we're getting there, almost done." And because after I sit there for a while, I just go forward and I was like, nothing's going to come. You and then it came. Most of the time. And then it came. And um, so I was just sitting there. I look over and um, this little doe walks out and um, from the trees. And I was like, okay. Um, we had also forgot range finder. Yeah, forgot the range finder. <laughs> so most important thing. I kind of remembered it. Season. You going to let me tell my story? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We. Um, I kind of knew the ranges from before a little bit, but wasn't super sure about it. Um, so where he came out, I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure uh, that's about 30 yards. And so um, he's standing there where I see my view. Um, there's a tree branch kind of in the way. He's above me a little bit. And he was like, all right, get ready, like shoot. And um, I'm like, hold on a minute. He's a little far out. And um when he comes, she, whatever comes up, like she should come a little farther. Um, the, the way she was walking looked like she would get in a better view for me. And better so view, but maybe a little bit. Further. I was waiting. Um, to me, it looked like she'd come right in a better spot in a couple minutes as she was kind of meandering. So I gave her a little bit longer. He keeps yelling at me to shoot the thing. I wanted and you to tell I your was first like, year. honey, he, I was like, whispered up and I was like, she looks a little small. Like, does she look small to you? And he was like, nah, not that small. Go ahead and take it. Like, just get her down. They look different when they're by themselves. They and I was good. like, okay. Um, so I was just, I just was sitting there enjoying watching the deer eat, you know, sitting there. And um, he kept yelling at me to shoot. So I, I was like, well, that tree branch was 30. And then he got... The deer got to about a spot where it was between the tree branch where I was like, I think I should be fine and not have, like, not hit the branch at all. So I went ahead and drew back um, and then kind of lined it up and let her fly. And um, she jumped. She mule kicked pretty good. So and I then, thought she did good. Like, fell, fell down. Like, she jumped and then fell down and then got, like, scurried back up and, like, ran in a circle and then kind of be lined off. Kind of like half fell, half ran. And went down the hill. Yay. So I went way down the hill. Um, and it was weird. Just stopped and we were listening, waiting for her to drop. I could see her as she ran all the way down the hill. I mean, she made a right. And then it looked so like she dropped. So she kept running. And then all of a sudden it kind of stopped. And he goes, I think she dropped. And because you could hear her going all the way down the hill. And so when it stopped, he's like, I think she dropped. So we gave it a second, got down. And um, 
you went and kind of got pulled the truck up and we, so we could wait a little bit and then um we headed out but this time it was dark and um i forgot my flashlight which yay me so we had like one and um a couple buddies came up to help us look for her. so um we had like two flashlights between the four of us and so that was fun yeah so heading down this hill through thick brush and um blood a lot of blood a lot of blood so i was thinking hey i had a good shot um was super excited um just shaking nervous and just like super excited um thought i had a great shot and we finally i don't know checking 10 20 minutes probably we found her and um realized she was still alive and had hit her in the butt so we had to um kill her again <laughs> so um took care of that and then we got closer and realized that she wasn't a she but a little button buck so but hey the um, first deer and it was very tiny and i was like man you know super tiny and um it wasn't but, super tiny it was at least a year old or two maybe a year and a half old I'm thinking <laughs> it didn't have spots on it It had the yeah. horns almost so coming it's neat in the freezer. so um but yeah we i got my first deer and um now i know you know a little more what to look for and um mm -hmm. Have to gauge that so um yeah yeah i'm pretty excited yeah so if there's one thing you could tell girls watching this women wives watching this and their husbands hunt all the time how can you encourage them to get out there with their husbands i mean if it's not something you love doing you're not gonna enjoy it i will say um i don't enjoy it as much as he does but um i do enjoy it a little bit and it is fun to be able to get out there. I love just sitting out for a while. I do get bored after a while, but I think everybody kind of does um, until the deer start showing up. But it's just all a part of it. Um, that's that's why I always bring one thing: snacks. I helps you from getting bored. He always tells me not to eat my snacks. Well, no, if you come from a Ziploc <laughs> bag, I think it's quieter. Um, so or Saran wrap. I um, Saran wrap the peanut butter and jelly once. It was like an all day rifle hunt sit. Oh, all day right. and brought up sandwiches. So. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, if it's not something you love doing, if you're totally not that type of girl, then just be supportive of him in it and let him go off and do his thing. Um, but if you are any type to where um, you could do it a little bit, it definitely does encourage him a lot and he loves having me along. Um, yeah, it does. He loves too. putting that camo on my face. I think that's his favorite part. Is putting the little camo stripes on my face. Mm. Not camo black. You do look good in camo. The black. Um, so that's his face. He'll just smear it real good. Mm -hmm. uh, but and even if you even know if your wives don't like hunting guys, you can always include them in like the butchering process. I mean, once the deer is if they don't like they hunting, got... they're not gonna like the butchering process. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, like she can like. Listen, just because they don't like hunting doesn't mean they can't help with the meat. No, it can be like a family. After, um, after the guts are out, after it's hung and all that, you know, when you go and they cut up the meat, it just it looks like like a uh, like a um like like a leg like a leg you'd see at the store, like a pig leg or a whatever. Um, I mean, it's it's like seeing something at the grocery store, and she can help you cut it up, um, or you know, even if they like making bologna or jerky you know you can include them in helping they can do that and stuff like that so my thing is if they don't want to go don't push them just give them time when they hear you talking about stories with your buddies they might get intrigued and want to go um best thing is don't take them during rifle season late rifle season take them during bow season but not yeah not i like started i started going it was really cold and i got turned off so turned off um yeah like, like turned off like unattracted to yeah. hunting like you know turn yeah. on off yeah. i was turned off by just how cold it was and i never saw anything and um yeah. so with the bow early season it's a little warmer well and you probably went to um, very heavily you still get kind of cold out there but not near as bad like yeah. it doesn't soak through your bones well and you um, probably when you went hunting it was probably went to a very heavily pressured area Right, didn't you say it was like a national forest or something like that? Yeah, it wasn't super so, busy. That's I, another thing. If you it can, wasn't near as busy as the national ones up here, though. It was way far out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, 
you know, we had a couple properties that we knew people of, so it was pretty much just us. People let us hunt there, but we just never got out super often, so it wasn't a lot, enough chances to actually be able to um, really get anything. But, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I only go with him. I don't go every time he goes. Um, yeah, she usually picks a morning or an evening. I'll pick, like, once, once a week if I can help it. Um, cause I'm not like way, you know, as, as, um, nutty about it as he is, but I don't mind going every now and then and, um, sharing an experience with him and, um, definitely does. Um, I will say though, he enjoys it a lot more. I will say though, I film better than you do. Just saying. He just likes me going because then he can make fun of me the whole time and he can boss me around. She believes what she wants. But anyway, so I hope you enjoy the video from... Well, we didn't go out this morning. Uh, plan was to go out this morning, but um, got up and started looking at the uh, looking at the map, and uh, the wind just was not ideal for this morning. I didn't want to risk blowing out that buck. Um, so hoping possibly do an airport stand today. Uh, if you look here at the map. So here's where that big buck's been. Um, it's all thick in here. Um, this map's a little bit old and not updated, but um, as you can see, the wind is blowing right into the deer bedding area. That was this morning about, here's about 6 o'clock, so it's blowing straight into it um, all morning. So ideally, I want the wind to blow this way because we're on top of that ridge and the wind would just blow right over us. Um, wind's going to pick up, and the wind picked up this morning. Uh, I'm supposed to pick up until about, um, about, it's supposed to die down a little bit this afternoon. But here's the uh, airport stand up here. It's going to be going towards the trail. So we're in that shooting house too. So it'll be blowing towards the road. So we won't have to worry too much about spooking deer because A, we're in the box stand and B, it's blowing more towards the road. So we're going to go out this evening. Uh... Hopefully leave the house around 1.30, get out there about 2 or a little after 2, and just get set up for the evening. Um, <clears throat> hopefully some does and maybe a buck come out in the food plot this evening, and we can get a nice shot at one. So we'll see what happens. So as we're walking to this stand, I'm starting to wonder if my key actually fit. So once we got there... My key did not fit. They changed the locks on the shooting houses. So then we had to go to our two-man stand in the valley.
Oh, nailed him. What a shot. Yes. Oh, he's going, he's going. Get an arrow in, get an arrow in. Oh, shoot. He crashed. He did. She crashed. Give me knuckles. It was through the tree. That's what Good I was trying to tell you. Good shot. What'd you aim at? That 30. Did you have 30? Oh, oh man. Right, right. Be by, below the shoulder. Low. You know what I mean? Right below the shoulder. Did you hear him drop? Yeah, I heard him drop. I see where exactly where he went. Go all the way down to that bottom and then cut it over. Yes. Oh. Hey. Hey. Look at me. Nice job. Good shot. 30 yard there. shot with no range finder. I was nervous about Are you shaking? That branch, but there was one clear spot. I'm shaking. Yeah, that's why I had to give it a second. I knew he wasn't going I said, take, did you hear me say take your time? Take your time. How worried, did you see where it hit him? What? Did you see where it hit her? Not exactly, but. I know it hit, I heard it hit. No, yeah. I know it hit because of the way she jumped. Yeah. Can you look back? I'm I cannot stop shaking. I'm turning this camera off or I drop it. This is where I'm going to unscrew the broad head. Don't unscrew it. You might slice someone's hand when they're skinning it. Oh, that does smell right. Yeah. Maybe you should just get it here. <laughs> you didn't bring your stuff though, did you? Yeah, I have it. You got all over Oops. your truck bed. Okay, I can't get it. You're going to have to try. That's uh, that's what you call bologna and yeah. bologna and uh, sausage right there. Some jerky. Appreciate appreciate y'all's help. Oh, thank you. We would have never gotten it up. Oh, well, you would have. It would just take a little. We would be here tomorrow probably. I've drunk some pretty big deer up over there. It's uh, it yeah, takes yours long. last year took a long. You know what? It's a, we couldn't even pick it up to get it on the four or it was mm -hmm. that was a big deer. Well, was, yeah, I'm kind of thankful it was that small. Oh. Yeah. Well, if it was a buck, we could have grabbed the antlers and yanked it up. All right, well, let's get to the skinning. Even though it didn't turn out to be a doe, we still had fun on that hunt, and I was so pumped for Amy to get her first deer, and what a beautiful day to kill one. Well, I hope you enjoyed that hunt. Um, a lot of funny things went on with that hunt. Um, as you saw in the story, we had to switch stands because just some guy is giving us difficulties on the hunting land, but, um, it still ended up well, as you saw. And, um, I'm just, I'm so glad it worked out the way it did. And I was so proud of her taking that second shot. Um, I know it would have been really, it would have been hard for me uh, to take another shot like that, but, uh, I was so proud of her and, um, meets in the freezer. So that's all I can say about that. But, I had the whole week off of work, and so I was going to use it to my advantage. Uh, first, first half of the week was kind of warm and rainy, um, and then the second half was a lot colder. Um, Monday morning, I went out I'm trying to think what I saw. Monday, I heard a lot of noise behind me um, in the woods. It was kind of thick. Oh, I did see one doe early, or no, actually it was late. It was like nine or ten o'clock, coming up the creek. And, you know, I'm still learning things. I'm, I'm no professional hunter, but I uh, thought, oh, well, maybe if I snort wheezed at it, it would stop because, you know, bucks do that to each other. And so <laughs> I, I dove bleeded at it and then I snort wheezed at it. I was snort wheezed for some of you that don't know what that is. It's like, uh, sounds like <laughs> kind of like that. And bucks do that when they're fighting and they're like, you know, get out of here type of thing. Um, and I just wasn't using my head and didn't really think through the situation like I should have. And I smart was at it and she like came a few more feet and just got out of there. Um, got talking to my friend Tim that I've had on my podcast a lot and he kind of instructed me through when to use those. Um, so like if you're calling, trying to call in a buck, you can do rally your antlers with the grunt when it gets later in the rut. 
here in the next day or so, next week or so, you know. Um, so anyway, Snowy's at her, and she took a few feet and was gone. So then I was going to go to the airport stand, and I was going to put up a hang-on because there's a bunch of trails that come behind that shooting house where the deer come in. And so I was going to put a hang on, but there was no, as you saw, um, as you'll see that there was no, um, there's no trees really to put them there. So I ended up hunting the shooting house, uh, that night. So, uh, take a look at this, take a look at, uh, that day. Good morning guys. Looking forward to this week. Uh, I got like a whole solid week to hunt every day. So gonna get in the grind it's almost halloween so it's getting close to that full moon and bucks be chasing does and had a little action on saturday uh saw big daddy and big daddy jr or little j as we like to call them the eight and the six uh chasing each other around so kind of out of bow range but hoping to bring them in uh into bow range today and get them down if not uh, shoot a nice doe this morning, so let's get it. Last uh, hour wasn't too bad. Um, saw a doe down in the creek bottom, down where we found um, Amy's deer. So I tried grunting it out a little bit and snort wheezing, but it didn't. It looked for a little bit, but uh, then walked off. So getting a little warm. Bugs are starting to come out and stuff. So I'm gonna go set up a uh, a hang on down by the big food plot and maybe see if I can get one tonight. So, good uh, turkey sign, good turkey sign here on the way up this hill. We hunt down in that valley down there. Beautiful uh, scenery there on the way up and on the way down, but. So, let's go hang up the hang on. So I just got back to the truck from the uh, valley stand there. And I'm um, heading up to the airport food plot. Um, to hopefully look for a uh, spot to put a hang on because I really don't want to hunt out of the tower tonight because it's hard to see behind you in the woods behind you when the deer are coming out but if not I'll shoot out a tower and hopefully they come in front and I'll have a good shot so 
Let's head over to the food plot. We change of plans. I'm down here at the food plot. There's like no trees to hang on. My hang on on. They're all so thinny, thinny, so thin. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just come and hunt out of the shooting house with my crossbow and see how I make out with that. Hopefully does come in early. If not, it'll still be a good evening. Great views and stuff, so. We'll flip back to tonight. Well, as you can see, I'm in the shooting house now. It's about four o'clock. So, I'm in the food plot just the right time. It's kind of warm actually, right now. The flies are all in this thing. Cause it's so warm now, it's like 50 degrees. Here's the food plot. This is where Amy and I saw that buck. So, there's a nice trail coming behind me. So, I'm hoping to get a nice doe in the food plot today. You'll see that he out there. In this cluster of trees. She's right there. week of bow hunting <clears throat> wasn't terrible um, saw a doe nice doe within uh, gun range this morning down by the creek but not within bow, bow range and then up here at the food plot saw another deer where that big buck was a couple weeks ago um, she was out of doe range as well so but at least we're seeing deer so um, hoping to try a new food plot tomorrow that I haven't tried out yet. So, got lots of options for this week. So, hopefully going to have Amy with me tomorrow. So, day one of hunting done. See ya. What's up? What do we see? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. Any squirrels? One squirrel. One squirrel. Yeah. What, what, what did I tell you this place was? Um, Starts with a G. Gar hole? Yeah, this is a gar hole. We're sticking. We're, they were sticking to. We're sticking to the uh, old two man, the old trusted two man. So, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So we'll see you on So as you saw, like Amy said, it's a gar hole. That I've only seen on camera, the bucks were coming in at night. There's a tin point that hangs around there at night. So and then a couple of does and a couple of turkeys from what I've seen on there, but those were like super early, like in the like four in the morning or so. Um didn't go Wednesday at rain, which our food plots were getting dry, so they really needed them. Um and then Thursday uh, I went Thursday afternoon because the wind wasn't right for Thursday morning. So I went Thursday afternoon 
um, into a new setup that I had. That's right. I went up into a new setup um, by the corn. Um, there's a green field as you leave the as you leave the property, and there's those always in there. Every time I leave, and I'm like, oh, this would be a great spot for them to hang on, like towards the corn and kind of close to the green field. And there's a little bit of patch of woods there. So I, I set up a hang on stand, went through that first night, and it was probably the best deer, other than killing a deer, is the most deer I've seen at one time uh, this season. So check out that hunt. What's up, guys? It is day four of my week long hunt. Didn't get to go out yesterday because it was raining all day. So that was good though, because we needed some much needed rain for the food plots. So was gonna go out this morning, but wind was not right for the stand. Didn't want to risk blowing deer out this morning. So uh, I am heading in, it is about almost 10 o'clock, uh, about 9.45 or so. Uh, I'm heading in, there's a field green field uh, by the cornfield on our way in that deer are in every single evening So I'm going to set up a hang on pretty close to that Green field hoping to catch a doe this evening. Just you know try something different it's Thursday You know if not I can always go back to the two men on Friday so I'm headed to the property to hang up that hang on and see what happens tonight I mean, I don't know if the deer will be too far or whatever, but you know, I just wanted to try something different because I've seen deer in that field every single night. Um, Monday night, there was like eight deer in that field. And then Tuesday night, there was like three deer in that field. So I'm uh, gonna go put up a stand this morning, midday. Deer hopefully won't be moving too much so I don't spook anything. And so hopefully going to uh, try that out tonight. You know, it's Thursday, do something different. Give, give our two man a break, you know? So anyway, so we'll see what happens tonight. So the deer are usually in this field right before I leave. So I'm thinking there's lots of signs saying they're coming through here up along the corn. So I'm gonna put one over there in a tree along the edge of this field. All right, so here's the situation. I had five does come in at about, what time is it? 5.30, about 5.15. And they piddled in this corn for a while and then they came out and then they went back in and then they were walking down towards me about 30 yards away. And the big doe came back in and went into the corn and I didn't want her to. I wanted her to come back out so I could get a broadside shot. So I used the can, just a little quiet can. And um, she came back out and was looking. And at 30 yards, she offered me a nice shot. So I took it. It's 30 yards, so I don't know. So I'm hoping to find my arrow. So we'll see what happens.
แม shot but I don't know if I hit it or not. I figured that eh, why not, you know? She's a nice big doe. I just threw a couple trees, but well 
guess I won't have to cock my arrow on the way out. I hope it was a good shot. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll sit here for a little bit and see what happens. She was standing and actually it's a little bit farther than that is like right about right about here my stands right there you can barely see it it's like right there so so far no blood oh here's my arrow all right well here's the truth what we got it's dry I missed dang it well that's deer hunting for you I mean it's clean you didn't hit it. well wait there's a little bit of something on there I got a piece of something because there's deer hair right here Maybe I nicked it or something. It's wet. Maybe I shot too low. But I'm gonna look around for blood and see if I see anything. And then if not, with this air looking the way it is, I don't think I hit her. And if I did, it wasn't that good of a shot. So, um, stay tuned and we'll see if I get a blood trail. Well, right now I'm not sure what to think because there's deer hair right there, but no blood. So I'm not sure what to think at this point. She was standing like right around in here. And I don't see any blood. Uh, and then she ran into here. seen any blood or anything in here. Well, yep, I think I just chalked that up for a miss. But we'll see. I'll look around a little bit more and see if I see anything. And if not, I'll just pack up and come here in the morning. Hunt the two man in the morning and see if I can get one then. She was a nice doe though. So, we'll see. so I'm back at the truck. I looked for, I don't know. 15 20 minutes couldn't find anything but the deer hair So I'm looking at the film. I don't know if you can see this or not. We'll try so Here's the film Watch when I shoot Okay, so I'll shoot. Let's go back a little bit Okay, so pull my bow up Pull the bow up. I aim. There's a 30. 30. Uh, 30. Okay, so I t it was between 30 and 35 because I ranged it twice. The first time I ranged it, I was shaking pretty bad. And it said 35. I'm like, well, I'm going to double check because I was moving a little bit. So I checked it again. It said 30. So I'm thinking maybe it happened to. Well, you'll see what happened to this up here. When I pull the trigger to let the arrow fly, let me fast forward a little bit. Okay, so I let it fly. See that tree branch right there? If you watch it closely. It moves. This one right there. Watch that one. It moves. And it moves pretty good, actually. So, yeah, it moves actually pretty good, actually. 
And there goes the deer running off, as you can see. So, I think two things happened. First, I hit tree limb. And second, I probably should have, I should have calmed down, taken a deep breath, ranged it again. And my, I'm thinking it was 35 because I'm thinking that maybe I moved to the left a little bit and caught, because sometimes with your range finder, you can check, um, grab a limb. Like your range finder will think you're trying to range a limb when you're trying to range farther out than the limb. So sometimes you have to move it just a little bit to get past that and make sure your crosshairs are in a different spot. So two things happen. Lesson learned though. Um, so A, make sure you have a clear shot. Make sure there's no branches in the way. And B, always make sure your distance. Um, I didn't even think the deer were going to come. I thought the deer were going to come from the corn, but I thought they were going to come from closer, which the little fawn did. I don't know if you see that in the video or not, but um, a little fawn came out. I almost shot him because I thought it was there was five deer. There was uh, three little guys and two big mamas. And I saw the corn move, so I'm like, oh, that's deer because hunting at the other property at, um, last year, Oh, and growing up too, the deer were always in the corn. So you kind of like got, you kind of got to know like what was a deer in the corn or not. Cause I mean, squirrels will play in the corn too, but they're more up top. But when the whole stock is shaking, it's usually a deer or either a raccoon or something, groundhog. So I was watching it for that too. And then I saw, I saw the little guy. I'm like, oh, that's definitely a fallen. Well, there's definitely a big mama nearby, hopefully. And sure enough, to I didn't see the other one, but I definitely saw the other one, the one I shot at. I saw her. She came, the fawn came out first, and I went, man, to stop it because I thought it was the mom, but it wasn't. Well, then it looked at me. I'm like, oh, snap, that was the fawn. Well, the fawn kept moving. And then the fawn went back, came, went up the row a little bit, and then came back and went back in the corn. And then mom came back and she was, started to go in the corn. And I went, I'm like, oh, that's the one I want. And I, I was like, oh, what do I do? And I was going to grunt at her. I was like, no, that's Buck. She'll run off. So I did a little can bleat. And she stopped. And she came back out of the corn looking for that, that doe that I, with the can. And um, typically I wasn't going to take a front shot. But I know you can. And she had a full, like nothing was in her way. So I was like, oh, I can, if I aim towards the middle, it'll get, it'll get ribs. And it'll get, uh, if I can aim right, right in the middle. It would go through and get the lungs, but between hitting the tree branch and the range being off, I shot low. So, but lesson learned, still got two more days to hunt. I'm going to hunt tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, hopefully tomorrow evening I'll hunt with Harrison a little bit, get a video of him, of him hunting. Haven't gotten to hunt with him yet, so looking forward to that. So we'll see y'all tomorrow morning. See ya. So we'll see you in the morning. See ya. So yeah, I was really discouraged after that hunt because I was like, oh man, I was ready to be done for archery because I have two doe tags. And so I want to get one for archery and one for rifle or late season. So I was like, yes, I'm going to be done. And as you saw, I clipped her. Didn't get any blood, just hair. So I learned two lessons. As you saw, I learned two lessons from that. Always double check, triple check in my case, your yardage. And never shoot through trees. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just, I, I don't know. I was shaking a good bit and I really wanted to get done. So, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And then Friday I went, uh, Friday evening I went because the um, wind wasn't right. For some reason that stand in the valley of the wind. One day it'll say what it is and then you check that morning and it's switched or whatever. It's just so swirly down there in that valley. Um, but I went that morning and, or that evening and I saw one like right at dusk that was like 80 yards, 90 yards away. So she came in, looked around and then just was gone. She ran. So I heard some noise behind me cause there was a cold front came in Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And, um, I heard a lot of leaves being scratched behind me. Um, it's still thick behind me as you saw, so it's hard to tell, you know, squirrel, I mean, most of the time it's a squirrel, but 
a couple of times I thought I saw a doe or whatever, or heard a doe or buck, whatever. Um, so, and- well, it is Friday of my week of hunting. Um, didn't go this morning, uh, because my alarm didn't go off. So anyway, Harry went and sat in my stand that I missed my doe at last night. He didn't see anything. So supposed to be some good weather today. A uh, nice cold front came in last night. So deer should be moving this evening. So we'll see what happens. Let me head down to the food plot down here. And I haven't been down here since Monday. I was giving it a break. But there's tons of deer sign down here. Walking down here. Grass is all matted down. I found a nice uh, rub or scrape. Hold on, a whole lot of nada action. Whole lot of nada. What am I saying? <laughs> whole, not a lot of action is what I'm trying to say. Uh, tonight till right at dark, um, I heard some deer coming in behind me, and uh, didn't didn't get a chance to see them. And then right at last dark, there was a nice doe coming down the hill where that six point that I shot came down, but. He, she came down and she was about 100 yards away uh, she didn't like what she saw for some reason she got looking around and then she kind of just ran out of there so thankfully she didn't blow so that was good but gonna be back early in the morning with Amy and hopefully she can knock down uh, my final hunt was on Monday because Saturday I wasn't able to make it uh, my final hunt was Monday evening Halloween and let me tell you what a hunt uh that time last year is when i missed that eight point uh up at nace farms uh back before i had a range finder and i just guessed and shot right over his back um so uh check out this hunt it was a really really fun hunt didn't get anything but it was a really well this is the last day of my seven day deer hunt some days i got to go a lot and some days i didn't so i didn't get to go saturday uh, I was busy that day doing some stuff with Amy and everything. So didn't get to go at all Saturday. Would have been a great day. Nice frost and everything. But today it's Halloween. Uh, things happen on Halloween. Magical all the time. So uh, this time last year up at Nace Farms, I shot and missed at a nice eight-pointer. Um, not expecting to see anything that big tonight. But we'll see what happens. Uh, heading to the cornfield stand where I saw where I missed that doe so I'm hoping to get a doe maybe tonight and um, call it good for a couple days and hopefully maybe Amy can get her buck eventually but with the rut coming in and all so um, but yep heading to the corn stand hopefully I can get a nice doe they come back in so uh, we'll see what happens fighting over there. Can't really get a good video of it, but they're going at it. That's so cool. The one just went back in the corn, the other one's in the woods. Probably about 100 yards away. Can't really see them. left of daylight. I heard two bucks fighting over there. I couldn't really get a good look and see how big they were. It was pretty cool. But usually the does go into the green field to my right. But I didn't see them. I was hoping they'd come right out in front of me, but I haven't seen any. 
based on following the trail, they come like right through here. But I haven't seen anything other than those two bucks that were like 100 yards away. So we'll sit here for a few more minutes. I don't know if you can see this or not, guys, but look at those five clowns. It's like they're waiting for me to leave so they can come over here. <laughs> oh my. That's urban hunting for you sometimes. Not really urban, we're in the mountains, but when you hunt close to a road and houses, that's what you get sometimes. So... Sometimes, I guess they come, oh, there they go. <laughs> well, as I was saying was, that's what happens when you hunt close to houses and stuff. It's like they were waiting for me to leave so they could get in here. But, if I had a couple more hours of daylight, I probably could have just hid in here and they would have came right on in. I could have taken a shot at them, but... That's one thing I have never done, actually, is still hunting. And that's one thing I want to try to learn, especially as November approaches. So stay tuned for a podcast, because I'll probably be interviewing my friend Tim, because he's really an expert at it. Um, and then I'll probably talk to my other friend, Wyatt Shear. I know he does quite a bit of still hunting as well, but it's a little bit different where he hunts, because he hunts out in Montana. So... Um, so it'd be different for him, but I'm definitely going to get Tim here on the podcast and get some uh, tips from him. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, coming along on this whole week that I had off to deer hunt and what it's like deer hunting in the woods of Pennsylvania. Um, as you can see, it's not always successful. Um, as you saw, Amy got her doe. That was awesome. Well, it was technically a button buck, but first deer, that was awesome, 30 yards. Um, and then I, you saw that I had a couple close calls, missed a doe earlier last or later last week. And, um, just, I enjoy going out in the woods and just sitting and seeing God's creation. Um, do I always see deer? No, but do I still enjoy relaxing and just being in the outdoors? Absolutely. So I just wanted to thank you again for watching this video. Uh, like, and subscribe it and share it with all your buddies. Um, check us out on Instagram at hunting with a passion, uh, on Instagram. And, uh, if you're interested in our merch, this hat, these hats are out now, uh, 20 bucks. I think I'm selling them for 20 or 25. I'll have to check on Instagram again. Um, but also stay tuned because we're going to have some more merch come out, uh, in the next week or so that we're working on. So, uh, stay tuned for that. So like and subscribe. Go follow my Instagram. Also, I do have a podcast as well. Um, had a, a couple famous people on there. Uh, Blake Pickle from Primos and um, a Shoot Straight with Wyatt Shear and his family. Um, so go check them out. Podcast on Spotify. I think it's on Apple as well. Just type in Hunting with a Passion. It'll come up. It's the same logo as this hat. So Go check it out, and uh, thank you for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Amy getting her deer, and then all the close calls I had. A um, couple close, close calls I had this past week. Um, but hey, that's deer hunting. As you saw in the end, that's deer hunting. Um, you're not always going to see something. You're not always guaranteed to see anything. Um, but that's why I like it so much, because it's like a chase. You know, you you go and you get all pumped and you think you're going to see something and sometimes you don't sometimes you do sometimes you get a nice deer comes in close and you can shoot it and sometimes it's 80 100 or in that 
case on Monday, the first Monday, 200 yards away. So, um, so it was really cool on Halloween to hear them bucks fight. And I wish I could have gotten a good video of it, but, um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We still have three weeks to deer hunt. Um, so to, for Bo anyway, so I am hoping to hunt. I'm hunting every weekend. We have Friday coming up that we're off. I'm hoping to go then. So I'm really hoping to get a doe in the next two or three weeks. And Amy still has her buck tag. So we're still hoping that she gets one. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But thank you for watching. Um, also, I want to make a huge announcement. We are going to be selling t-shirts, uh, hunting with a passion t-shirts. Uh, it's got a big buck on the back that my friend, John Mark Collier, uh, shout out to him. He's a graphics design major. He designed the buck on the back and then, uh, on the front it says hunting with a passion. And then on the back, it'll say, what's your passion? I'm hoping in the future to maybe make some with fish, uh, with a trout or a bass on the back, and maybe one with turkey, maybe one with ducks. Um, but they're going to be coming out soon. I am working them, working on them hard right now, the design and everything. Um, I'm hoping to be have them out for sale by Thanksgiving. So stay tuned. Check out my Instagram. I'll be shooting it out on that. Um, so check out my podcast, Hunting with a Passion podcast. This last podcast that I had, I had Lake Pickle from Primo's Hunting. Um, a lot of y'all are familiar with Primo's Hunting with the can call, the grunts, the trigger sticks. I have all those actually. Um, but he is on their hunting staff. So check him out. Um, so that was check that podcast out. I'm coming out with one here shortly soon as well. Going to be some uh, hunting stories and uh, some tips. I'm going to hopefully get my buddy Tim uh on this next podcast as well to talk about uh spot and stalk hunting uh, or still hunting as some people call it i'm hoping to get him on the show to talk about that because that's something i need to get into because i'm hoping with a bunch of guys to go hunting and mule deer hunting in nebraska next fall so i've talked about that a couple times on my podcast so i'm hoping to learn the art of spot and stalk there um, so I'm hoping to get him on the podcast and get some tips uh, and ideas from him, his experience, because he does it a lot. So thank you for watching uh, this episode, and we'll talk to you later.